shows after that. Here's a look at row number two. Mike Hacker making it out of the last semi to get a shot here at the main event. The Magic Mile is underway at DeCoin. Well, off in the turn one, it looks like Kevin Atherton pulled the trigger a little bit quicker than everybody else. It looks like he's gonna have the lead coming off of turn number one. He chose a slot way to the outside, up near the wall, and that might have been where there's just a hair more traction for the start. Parker sliding to the inside. You see the number one coming up to challenge for third. Yeah, it's three or four abreast going into turn three and four. Right now, Kevin Atherton's got the lead. Byers right there, Parker's right there. This is gonna just be a real slugfest. 25 laps around the one mile here at DeCoin. Byer, you can see the front end shaking as he's running extremely hard to keep up with Atherton. On the outside, here comes Moorhead to take second. Now, Moorhead ran her up high. He's, he just doesn't want anybody to get away. A mile race, there's a lot of strategy involved. Tires, lines, where to be on the last lap. But nobody wants anybody to split and get away early. They want to be in it at the end. Moorhead has won on the miles before, but he has never won it to coin. This is one that every rider dreams of adding to their resume. And to do that, you need to get down the back straightaway with as much speed as you possibly can carry. I'm probably running five, six mile an hour faster at the end of the straightaway. So if I can pass him around the outside and carry that momentum through three and four, hopefully I got enough advantage off four that they can't draft me to start finish line. That's that's a new deal's kind of taken over. Heck with just pussyfooting around and following the guy off turn four and leading it. I want to see if I can put him away in three and four and be far enough ahead. The words of Steve Moorhead on bike number 42, the Finley Flyer runs in third. Well, it's still anybody's race. I mean, there's literally 17 motorcycles in a row here, and Byer's still having that handling problem. He's dancing down the front straightaway. I'm sure he's causing fits to everybody. There's Rodney Ferris, hot rod up near the front. And did you see the number 27 sneaking in? Davey Camlin making a charge towards the front. Yeah, he doesn't want anybody to get away either. He knew how he won last year. He was in the back for most of the race. He eased his way to the front, and he pulled out the victory on the last lap. There goes Ferris to the bottom side of Moorhead. Parker sits back, waiting, patient. And then look at the pack after them. You can see those yellow leathers of Davis. Look at the front wheel of Durrell on the 58 bouncing all over. Well, there's a couple bikes that seem to be having handling problems. And believe me, when you're on one of these motorcycles down that straightaway, that's really hairy. I'm grabbing on the chair sitting here just watching him. You'll see some of the riders reach up and grab a tear off too as they go down the back straight away. Yeah, vision's important out here and, and little bits of dirt and engine debris, whatnot, accumulate on those face shields. 140 plus, you wanna see where you're going. Absolutely, this time down the front straight away. Parker to the inside, Kamla comes with them and then strings out even further to take the lead. Boy, when, when one guy goes down low, another a little lower, and that worked great for Davy Camlin, even though he drifted out high coming off of two. He's in the lead now. He knows how to lead this motorcycle race. Let's take a look at that again. Here's how he did it, Bill. Yeah, Parker swung out of the draft, thought he'd go in low. Camlin said, thank you very much. I'm on your tail, and I'll take that right to the lead. And every rider will file away that information that Camlin was able to take two riders with one drafting pass down that front straightaway. They'll file that away. They'll remember that as we get to the end of this one. They're testing each other all through this race. They're measuring each other. They want to see where they got to be on that all-important last lap. 25 miles, 25 laps around this big one-mile oval. It is D-shaped. The back straightaway a little shorter than that long, long front stretch. Look how close they are to the wall. Oh, my, you know, they have to drift out and make that exit as wide as possible to carry as much speed as they can. But that's got to be exciting for them. Look at Atherton sliding that motorcycle, and they never lift up the throttle. They just work their body to regain the stability of the motorcycle underneath them. Hey, Parker with the draft pass up the inside. Every time he looks over, there's a different guy next to him. They don't know who's going to appear or reappear. Parker has won here twice before. His first career win came here in 79. He came back 10 years later and picked up another win here in July of 89. Well, right now, Atherton, he wants to pick up another mile victory right here. I mean, he's been leading 
early in the race. Through the, he can always forge to the front. He had a dominant heat race win. I mean, he's going to be a player before the day is out. And the thing is, Bill, all those riders all the way back to Will Davis back there in 21, they're all still in the hunt. Yeah, nobody's out of it yet. Literally, the 17th place guy still is in the hunt. This is the most competitive mile all season long. Look at Rich King way to the bottom on bike number 80, trying some very unique lines. And Camlin down to the front side. Well, let's give Rich that uh, Rider of the Week award, you know, for his unusual lines. I like that. That's a good choice. Camlin holding on. Moorhead goes way up to the top, man. And Atherton will sneak into the bottom. Well, this is a classic mile race. AMA dirt track racing at its very best. If you don't like this, change the channel because it is only going to get better. And if you're not excited with this, it ain't going to work for you. Incredible racing. And how about maybe giving the Haynes Award to Will Davis down there in the yellow leathers for changing the engines and making the main event and running as a competitor, a challenger for the win. Oh, man, it's anybody's race yet. I mean, they go from first to fifth to fifth to first. Every lap, it's a constant shuffle. Moorhead's got an unusual wide line going into three. Some guys are diving low. Nobody's out of it yet. Davey Durrell swipes off another tear off back there in the 58. 10 laps are down, 15 to go. I don't think I've ever seen the riders fanned out so much across a racetrack choosing different lines as we are here today. Well, it's great. The track preparation was excellent. They can ride all over, and that's a compliment to the crew that maintains this track. Maybe this will be the year, Bill, where one of the veteran riders like Parker or Moorhead, somebody who's been here before, can utilize the experience from five years ago, figure out the track on that last lap and pick up the win here at DeCoin. Well, there's no question that experience helps, but I think one of the rookies has just as good a shot. This is still a wide open race. Will Davis in those yellow leathers, he's won lots of half miles, hasn't won a mile yet, came oh so close earlier this year at Springfield. Maybe it'll be his chance. Well, it's anybody's chance the way I see it. You know, Summoner's back in 17th, and I wouldn't rule him out. Up front, it's Camlin and Parker, Ferris, Moorhead, King, and Atherton. There's Davey Durrell, Ronnie Jones on the 16th. We come off a of four and up the front straight away once again. Well, and Moorhead's going to do that inside line and drift up high. You know, Scott Parker will tag on to him. Next, it's Ferris. Then it's uh, Atherton, you know. But the two inside line guys are still Rich King and Will Davis. They've got a distinct line out there. And that was a little different line for Moorhead. We've seen him up around the top side. He's kind of sifting around a little bit, looking for some different lines now as he moves to the bottom side. Now back to the top. Well, the advantage in running in that top stuff off of the black groove is that it saves your tires. It's a little cooler. The hard stuff's harder on the tires. So these wily old veterans, they know that. Hathered into the bottom. That black groove has gotten wider, too, as the day has progressed. You might remember when we began, it was just a couple of feet wide. Now it's 15 feet wide. And they go side by side, elbow to elbow. It seems like Scotty's just eked out a little bit of advantage off that last corner. The question is, can they get back on him and reel him back in? Well, off of turn four, Moorhead has every intention of doing exactly that. Atherton in tow. This is far from over. Moorhead finished third in the points last year, the oldest rider on the tour. He won three races in a row in three weekends. He had his best year in a long time. And that's going to serve as just a, a launching pad for next year. He thinks, hey, if I did that good last year, I can do even better this. Moorhead is 40 years of age almost. He was born August 23rd, 1955. I got to cheer for him already anyway because we have the same birthday. But Moorhead's <laughs> 39 this season, and he's still dirt tracking. Well, dirt tracking is one of those sports where the skills come slow. Once you acquire them, they like to hang on to them. I mean, it's it's a it's a finesse sport. It looks like it's not, but it really is. We might have the same birthday, but I guarantee it was not the same year. More, it's still got a couple of years on me, and I'm going to remind him of every single one of those too. And he even could be one of the Haynes riders today, the way he's running. Well, there's no question he's got his Haynes on today because he's up front and riding hard. Parker out front. Looking pretty comfortable at this point. Now he's starting to pull away just a little bit. 
The question is, can Parker hang on? Stay with us, we're coming back to DeCoin for more. Welcome back to DeCoin. The red flag is out at the start finish line. That will bring the race to a halt. The reason being a very serious crash over in turns three and four. It involves rider number 92, Rodney Ferris. He went down extremely hard. All the riders coming to a stop now. Let's check in with Chris Carr to find out more. I feel bad for Rodney. I just caught him, and uh, I believe it was him on the outside and me in the middle, and uh, probably Davy Camlin on the inside. And We were three abreast going into the corner, and we had a shutoff contest. And uh, nobody really won on that deal, you know. Uh, Rodney poked it in there pretty deep and got up off the edge of the groove and collected the hay bales. So, uh, and I hate to see that happen. I mean, there was no contact or anything like that, but. Well, everybody is lined up the board sideways. We restart the action on lap 19 with a single file restart. Parker was the first rider. So he leads the point as we go back to green flag action. Rich King got a great start from the inside, using that low line again, moved himself up to second place. Now he's in the thick of it. Looks like he's getting a little bit more wobble out of the front end of that motorcycle, Bill, as this race progresses on. Yeah, a handful of bikes are having a similar problem. You know, you think it's the track, but actually it's the chassis setup and how the bikes are really set up for the individual rider. Some like a little quicker, and that's a little too quick. Chris Carr, number four, moves to the inside. He'll take over third. And I'm gonna nominate him as a possible Haynes Rider of the Week because he hasn't been doing this week in and week out like everybody else. He's been methodically working his way through the day and he's put himself in a position to challenge for the win here today at DeCoin. Okay, Scott Parker trying that low entry to turn three. Kevin Atherton on the outside of him. They drift up into that cushiony area. They're right on the verge of the black. It seems like both of those guys want to check out early. Maybe a breakaway between Atherton and Parker now. See if they can get out in front of everybody, help each other to pull away, and then settle it between the two of them on the last lap. Well, it's one of the biggest intervals we've seen during the whole race, and that's exactly what's happened. Kevin's using Scotty, Scotty's using Kevin. If they keep this up, they'll be able to decide it amongst each other. Look at the communication going back on the line. Did you see Davy Cameron on the 27 waving for everybody to tuck in behind him? Well, they know what's happening. They see Kevin and Scotty slipping out the front door. Now they want to use one another to catch up. They'll tuck in behind each other up the front straightaway. Not quite as tight in a bunch up the front stretch, but that's really where they need to work together because it's so much longer. It's a longer straightaway, you know, exit of turn four is going to be the key. Everybody's whoop, little slip by Parker off of turn two there, allowing Atherton to get a little bit further ahead. Atherton only has two Grand National Dirt Track wins, both of them coming on half miles. But he's an excellent miler. I mean, last year at San Diego, he pulled off one of the all-time finishes to garner a second place. He's good on all the tracks. Look at Moorhead now motioning. Get in behind me. Well, you wouldn't think the guys would actually be communicating at 130, 140 miles an hour. They really do. They know what's happening out there. They're crafty veterans. They know how to help one another. And you can see it happening. They're slowly easing their way up. They're going to be in this before it's all over. Parker to the inside to take the lead. Yeah, look at Moorhead. He took Boy. a low entrance. He chopped off 15 feet of the racetrack. Yep. Just like we said, he did everything he had to do. Now he's right Whoa, back in the thick. Look at Atherton. Wow, was that a maneuver? How did he save that? Well, had those lightning reflexes. I mean, the kid's just, a, he's an amazing athlete. At over 140 miles an hour, that front wheel had tucked underneath the motorcycle both directions, and Atherton saved it to lead him into turn one. Well, can you imagine how petrifying it is for the guys behind him who watch that? Incredible. Camlin, he's in second now. Can he repeat? Can he be a two-time winner at DeCoin? Parker coming off a of turn four, but the pack's right on his tail. Camlin to the inside. Atherton, Moorhead, they're four abreast going into this turn. The white flag is out. We've got one more mile of racing to go at DeCoin. Camlin leads him off a two. Where do you want to be, Bill? Boy, this is a nail biter. We've seen guys win from the number three slot coming off a of turn four. We've seen guys win from the number one spot. This is anybody's race. Parker takes him down into turn number three. Moorhead's right behind him. Camlin 
Atherton to the inside. Off of four we come. The magic mile is about to be over. Moorhead has the lead. Here comes Parker. Four, five wide. The winner is Camlin. Davey Camlin has done it again. Take a look at this finish. I've never seen one so close in my life. Five riders for the win. I'd hate to have to decide who was the winner. Davey Camlin has done it again. He wins at the coin. What'd you get? National Racing has been brought to you by Haynes. Just wait till we get our Haynes on you. Davey Camlin has won his second AMA Grand National Race, and his second win came at the same place as his first one, right here at the coin. Davey, was this as good as the first one? Oh, this is just as good. I, God, it it don't get any better than this, I tell you. We got hurt a few weeks ago, and and uh, that unfortunately the red flag came out, and it actually gave me a breath, a breather, because I've been uh, uh, haven't been able to train lately because I've been hurt. But this is this is as good, or this might even be better than the first one. Every one of these riders had a chance at it, even on the last lap, just about. Larry Pegram credited with eighth Brett fire, a good run in his heats. He finishes 12th. Will Davis has to change motors. He gets a 14. Well, we had to decide who would be our Haynes Rider of the Week, and after lengthy discussions between myself, Warner, and Myers, we chose number 80, Rich King. So close in his heat race and a huge win in the semis, we have given our Haynes Rider of the Week to number 80, Rich King. Tremendous job on the Honda in a field of Harleys. Tragically, Rodney Ferris lost his life in that crash in turn three here at DeCoin, but he will be remembered as a dirt tracker's dirt tracker.